Hey, it's Danny from Conscious Calisthenics here, and I am here with someone known as Nicole, and she is someone that was vegan for 15 years, and it's like, wow, that is a very long time to actually stick the vegan diet out for, because a lot of people find that they deteriorate way earlier on. And yes, yeah, she wanted to share her own personal story because she ended up running into a lot of different health issues and symptoms that she will go into detail into in this ex-vegan interview. And then she managed to switch to a carnival diet, to man which managed to send her in the direction of regaining her health and making her thrive optimally and function to the best of her ability. So yeah, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so if you could give um, more of an introduction to yourself so people yeah. can get to know you and what you're all about, and yeah, that would be great. Sure. Uh, so my name is Nicole Carter, and my you might know my uh, Instagram is Healthy with Nicole, and I am a health educator and a workforce health consultant. Um, I have a master's degree in health promotion, pr health promotion, which is School of Public Health. And so I work with, um, we call it population health management. And I've been doing that for a while now for a, a large healthcare company. And so we work with, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands of people on, wow. in the workplace um, and establish programs for them to address chronic conditions and, and overall well being. Um, and then I've been a health coach too for about, 17 years now so wow. my son is 17 he just turned 17 and that's when I graduated from grad school so that's about how long I've been doing it wow so yeah so you're definitely someone that is a very health conscious and health aware person yeah kind of my whole life I've been uh I think when I was in college you know I did the typical you know too much fun in college and I gained weight and I didn't feel good and I was drinking and I think right around then I kind of turned it around and became interested in working out a lot and that got me so far and then uh. um, before I was vegan I was on the crap diet so the standard American diet um, so I was definitely thought I had made an Im improvement when I switched over to vegan which was um, I was about 19 and at the time, I did feel a lot better because, as you can imagine, I was going from, you know, I went to college in Vegas, so I was <laughs> doing the all-night partying and then breakfast afterwards kind of thing. So, you know, another extreme. Um, and so veganism at first was actually really amazing for me. I lost a ton of weight and I felt really good. And I just, I think I had basically eliminated all of the junk food and processed food out of my world for, for a while. Um, and I was always a runner. I was, have been a runner since I was about 16 when I went to Denmark. And that was the only thing that I could do with people that didn't speak English. Um, so I was always very athletic, but um, my diet has changed pretty dramatically over the years. So all yeah. starting at about age 19. Okay, cool. And what was your reason for switching? Like you said, you wasn't feeling your best, but yeah, did you get into it for health reasons or environmental yeah. reasons or what was the reason behind the switch? Um, the switch to veganism? Yeah. Yeah. Well, at first it was just... Um, you know, a new thing to try and I'd read about it and, and it was not popular at that time. So this was, I think, in, let me see, gosh, I'm dating myself. Uh, I think it was about 93. So yeah. 1993. Yeah. And, um, it wasn't a fad at all. No. It was very weird to, to do that at that time. But, um, you know, I was really interested in health. And so I just started, you know, making a lot of veggies and going down to all that, you know, I was a kid. So it was new to me. Um, and so initially it was just to feel better and to lose weight or, you know, get so supposedly in shape. And so I, you know, and I did get a lot better because I eliminated so much trash from my diet um, that I did improve for a while. And then after I was doing it for, you know, probably a year or so, and I was still very athletic and a runner. Um, and I think, so I was in my first year of, gra of, um, undergraduate and I was studying psychology. And during when I was putting myself through college, I waited tables and I became a trainer. 
So the fitness piece came back in and then I would see that as a trainer, you know, as a personal trainer. Um, and so the, the whole interest in health became a lot bigger. And so um, it was initially for health. And then as I went through it and I started to kind of delve into the whole world of veganism, I learned about environmental impact and animal welfare and the things that kind of drove it home for me. In fact, when I was finishing grad school, I was teaching classes on plant-based diets and vegan diets oh, and wow. how to cook and how to sprout. And I did the raw food diet for a year solid. And I taught people how to, you know, dehydrate crackers and all that stuff. Um, so it was for all of the reasons that people go vegan, you know, initially health, I think yeah. is what we're drawn to. And then when you learn other things, um, they become of interest and, and it was, I always had an interest in animals, but I think the biggest piece for me was more environmental. I okay. thought that it was the best thing for the environment. And I was, you know, it was kind of, and still is a big passion of mine and I love nature and now I live by the beach. I was just swimming in the ocean before I got on this call with you. And, um, so it's always near and dear to my heart is the environment. Yeah. Um, so that was a big piece of why I did it. And then I, you know, I stayed on that path a, a long time, you know, 15 years, but it wasn't the entire 15 years that was good. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I just didn't know. I didn't know why I was having problems. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. And Hindsight. It, yeah. And it's really good that you keep affirming that you wasn't necessarily feeling all of the amazing benefits you got when you switched vegan because of the vegan diet, but it's just because you remove so much of the crap from your diet, which seems to be a reoccurring thing for people. Yeah, a lot of people are like, oh, it's the best diet ever because this diet helped me heal the, this and this and this. And it's just like a lot of people tend to forget about all the crap that they removed at the same time. Yeah, that's a significant piece for a lot of people. And I totally get it. A lot of people say, oh, I feel better than I ever have in my life. Well, if you've come from eating processed foods and a lot of sugar and fried things, then yeah, of course you're going to feel way better. And it is an upgrade. I would say I'd rather yeah. people eat, you know, a plant-based diet than, than nothing but processed foods. But I don't think either are the answer, but definitely that's why I think people, you'll hear people say, but I'm, I'm feeling amazing on a plant-based diet. Well, yeah, you've had a major upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah, for sure, without a doubt. So, yeah, so you ended up sticking it out for 15 years. When did you, can you remember when you started to notice telltale signs that it wasn't working for you and, like, how the trajectory went where it started to go down and downhill for you? Mm -hmm. I can't pinpoint exactly what were all the issues that were attributed to the diet, but I can tell you I started having health problems Um probably when I was around 25, 26 okay. and I wasn't able to get pregnant and I wanted to, and ah. it took a long, long time. And I ended up having like endometriosis and all of these problems that, um, yeah, I, I don't know that I can't say that that was attributed to that. Yeah. I just know I had that. And that's where kind of the things began. Um, ultimately I ended up, you know, having two kids and, it was after that that I think where I really went downhill. And and that was around the time that I also did the year of raw vegan. Okay. So I, I was thinking that, um, you know, I'm not feeling my best. I don't have a ton of energy. I must need to take it to the next level. So I did with blenders, you know, a Vitamix is big full of uh, spinach and mangoes and <laughs> drink the whole thing. And sprouted flaxseed crackers and all that stuff, which I'm sure you're familiar oh, with. Yeah. Um, so I did that and that is when I started to notice, I started, I was getting sick a lot. Um, and I remember because I had uh, two very young kids, you know, they're essentially babies yeah. and two, two Labradors. And so I was <sighs> extremely busy and exhausted. Like, People would say to me, oh, you know, you're a mom. It's Of course you're tired. It's normal. And I thought, I don't know. I used to put my daughter on the slide and rest my head and close my eyes while she went down wow. the slide. Like, that's how tired I was. And I remember just not even being able to keep my eyes open. And I just never I thought, really? I mean, I don't see everybody like this. So... That was when it occurred to me that something wasn't right. And I didn't think it was the diet. 
for the forever. I didn't think it was the diet. So I tried, I studied herbal medicine for six years and I did, I deep into it and I still use some of those things today, but um, that is where I leaned in where I thought this must be what I need. And I looked for, I was constantly on the hunt for remedies for the fatigue that I was feeling. Um, I had full blown candida issues and I attribute that to the raw food because it was just a ton of sugar. You know, you can't eat six bananas and two mangoes a day and not have a sugar issue. Um, and then, um, and, and I think that, you know, that whole thing I think is really where I started to um, damage my pancreas, basically. I think that my insulin just could not keep up with all of that sugar, even though it was fruit. It was just obscene amounts. and My body just couldn't really deal. Um, that's what I think, looking back. And then um, I started losing hair. My hair was falling out like crazy. I have thin, you know, I have a lot of fine hair, but I was like, fistfuls of hair coming out Whoa. and it went on for a long time and everyone said it's just because you've had kids and I it was stayed with me the entire time I was plant-based so um so I had that and then I had uh gone to the doctor for for I didn't know what but I got blood work done and it was thyroid and it was high blood glucose and I was thin by the way I was not ever a whole lot different than I am now so it's not it was never like real obvious on the outside and um, so, yeah, so those were the main things that started. And then in around 2012, um, I got, well, I'm skipping ahead a lot, but in 2012, I got diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, which was the big thing where I was like, okay, things are getting bad. Yeah. What is going on? And, um, and I had actually started to eat a little bit of... Um, fish and eggs a little while before that because my vitamin D levels and my cholesterol levels were so extremely low that my doctor, my ch- chiropractic doctor said, you got to eat something protein because you're running into like some serious risks here. So I started to add in a little bit of eggs and fish and I did feel a little bit better, but it wasn't enough. And, um, so I still continue to go back and forth between veganism and, uh, you know, plant-based and I just, because I had a lot of guilt in my mind about what I was doing and I, and it was, I had brainwashed myself to think that veganism was the only way I could be healthy and that was how I was going to fix all these issues. But I had been doing that for many years and it wasn't working. In fact, it was getting worse. Yeah. So... I had no choice but to try something else. And after the colitis, I don't know if you're familiar with that disease. Uh, yeah, but I, I, me, me and my dad both had it. We both cured ourselves of it. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> it's gnarly. Yeah. Um, so, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And it's painful and it's miserable. And I had it for seven years. Yeah, it's, and it's scary because it can inevitably end up in cancer as well. And yeah. Oh, or you can die from it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. people do. And... So yeah, it was really scary and I just had done everything in my power to fix it. And I was willing to do anything. I quit this food, that food, I did elimination diets, I did macrobiotic, went back to vegan, my stomach blew up. And um, I literally felt like I just was at a dead end that I tried everything. Yeah. And I tried the keto diet. Um, That was the last thing I did. And I, I felt like I saw a little bit of improvement with it, but not... Not really enough. And I think it was because I was still eating a ton of vegetables. Ah, uh, okay. So, um, so you want me to tell you how I found about uh, if I just If I just ask you a couple of things. So, yeah, you are someone, just like many people that interview, including myself, that was extremely diligent. It's like you ran into issues yeah. and you, tr- you ended up spending so much money on herbs and this thing and that thing and that thing. And like m- many vegans would say to people like us, well, you did it wrong. It's like, but when you speak to people like you, you didn't do it wrong whatsoever. And like you said, you started to go downhill even more when you had, you were pregnant and gave birth to child, which we know it rinses the body of so much nutrition. So your nutritional requirements Mm -hmm. are so much higher. And, and yeah, and you said about cholesterol, it being low. Most vegans would say, well, that's a good thing. You want your cholesterol very low. And this is what I, I, it's really good to say because I keep saying to people, well, it's okay to have a certain point when it gets too low, it messes up your hormone production, like completely. Yeah. And I guess that's what was happening for you. Um, Definitely. And yeah, what you said, uh, the keto diet it did help you, but 
a lot of people that run into issues with the build-up of plant toxins and it sounds that's what happened for you that just is not the best thing it doesn't work for them so yeah then that ended up sending you in the direction of trying something else which was yeah something that was more effective yeah for you. Mm. Yeah, I, you know, I just had realized that my stomach was hurting no matter what I ate. And what the only thing that I consistently ate was vegetables. I, I had for a long time cut out fruit, cut out grains, cut out legumes. Um, and I was essentially just eating a lot of vegetables, kale, broccoli. And by the way, I had a garden in the back of my yard for uh. the last couple years that I was vegan and I grew a lot of my own stuff so it wasn't like I wasn't eating organic I mean I was growing chard and kale and broccoli everything so um yeah so I just knew that that was the one thing that I was eating consistently but what was the kind of light bulb moment was I was listening to I came across Amber O'Hearn and I listened to her talk about how she cured her um mental illness with the carnivore diet and uh -huh. why so my background is in psychology my undergrad and i have a lot of interest in that field so i it struck me and because one thing i do know and i've known for a long time is that our mental health is strongly connected to our gut health and so when she said that when she said that i was like that makes perfect sense but like, of course and so i realized like that what she's saying is she healed her gut. She's saying she healed her mental illness. I, I hear she yes. healed her gut. So um, so I started to kind of research that a little bit more and I, and I researched it for probably six months before I did it. Huh. And I watched um, Sean Baker for a long time and all of his interviews and, it, and he really did sway me. I always credit him for, you know, no, I... bringing me to this diet because um, at the time, a lot of people didn't like him. He was getting a lot of heat from vegans. And I get it. You know, he's pretty um, straightforward in his approach. He doesn't sugarcoat it. He's like, hey, this is the way it is. And he has his own way of doing it. And I think it's great. But it was it had a huge influence on me. So I watched for a while. And then I tried it. Um, and I was a hot mess for the first couple of weeks. I was not doing it right. I was still eating this and that. And... Um, but I had just come off from keto, so I was partly the way there. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so it took me, like, a month of fumbling. So it was, like, two years ago, April, I started playing with it. And, and it took me about a month to actually figure it out and nail it. So by May, I was full carnivore. And so that was two years ago. And, um, yeah, and it was four months later that my symptoms had completely stopped for good. Oh, wow. And that I haven't had any colitis symptoms ever since. And everything else went away. The fatigue went away. The thyroid got, I retested my thyroid because my hair just stopped gro gro falling out. I mean, everything just kind of, I felt great right away. And my body leaned out really quickly, which I think happens a lot initially yeah. for people. Um, I really didn't lose a lot of weight. I was, I've always been, you know, about 115 to 118 is kind of my range, and I pretty much stayed right there. So, but I looked a lot different. I looked a lot leaner. You can see the pictures on my Instagram uh, okay. of keto versus carnivore, and even when I was plant-based and a marathon runner versus carnivore and not doing that anymore. So, there's I look tremendously different, but it wasn't a weight issue. It was something internal. So. That was a big switch, and then from there on, everything began to heal. My, um, I had a lot of anxiety and depression and insomnia, and all of those things started to abate. Wow. My gut was better in four months, but I drank coffee that whole time, which I no longer drink, and I sometimes wonder if I would have healed quicker. Um, yeah, the hormones, I did my thyroid panel, I did my cholesterol, and just everything was great. And my HDLs went up and LDL went down. I was like, wow, what is happening? I'm eating bacon and steaks, and it was pretty amazing. And so over time, over the last two years, it, I've kind of refined it a little bit. So I went, did some raw meats for a while, didn't care for it. I did the, I did, um, organ meats for a little while and that was good now i kind of like eh, here and there 
I don't make it a point to have it every day. Um, and then I did grass fed for a while, only grass fed. And then I just did conventional for a while. And then I did bison and lamb and chicken and fish, like rotating. Um, I even tried some low fat for a while. And so I've seen a lot of different sides of it. Yeah. And um, it's been really interesting to just see how your body responds. I don't think there's a certain right way. I yeah. think it's just everybody's different especially women there's a lot of variation between women and their hormones and needs um so i just kind of always adapt to you know what i feel like having and i've tried a few plants here and there onions destroyed me oh, wow. i did pate with onions in it one time and i thought i was gonna die wow. um and and then i tried mushrooms and they're fine um i still Eh, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know that there's that much redeeming of them, so I don't make it a point to eat them. But I did eat some, and it was okay. I had avocado and felt okay. Um, so I've tried a few things here and there, but for the most part, I just stay animal products, and that's where I feel the best. Uh, yeah, yeah, that that's really good um, for people to hear because so many people can listen to a certain carnival teacher and think they have to eat specifically this way all the time. They should only eat beef or they should only eat raw meat or you should eat organs or not. But yeah, yeah it sounds like for you, you've just been able to listen to yourself and aware that the body is forever changing and adapting and what may, yeah. you, what may you need today may be different tomorrow. And, and yeah, it's so good that you're someone that did so much of research for so many months before even switching onto diet and listening to so many people. And obviously, I guess for you through that process, it was helping to get rid of a lot of the vegan brainwashing and programming yeah. that you'd had programmed within you for a very long time. Definitely. Definitely. That's a hard one to overcome for a lot of people, the guilt and just, oh. and, and not just for vegans. For anybody that has been taught for how, their entire lives that they need to eat plants to be healthy when they don't know they might be hurting them. Yeah. You know, it's a really hard thing for people. Yeah, and especially when alongside that, it's like people think, especially a lot of people in the spiritual movement, the yoga movement, even just people that aren't into that, where they think that eating animals is such a violent thing. And that if you're a spiritual, mm -hmm. aware, conscious person, that's not what you do. And then people get emotionally invested and attached to this sure. whole ideology. Yeah. I had that experience because um, I'm a yoga teacher also, and I ah, have okay. a couple of certifications, and I did an advanced 500-hour training. And so you've got people oh. there that are, are you know, well-versed yogis. <laughs> and most of them are pretty open-minded, you know, accepting of others and are kind and majority but I still saw a lot of that in the yoga community of people that were like it was taboo because they knew about my diet and I will I don't really talk about it or push it on anybody yeah, yeah, yeah. but when you see me eating a plate full of meat versus most yogis are going to eat a plate full of plants you do get the weird looks yeah. um so I would just tell people that it was um I did it to you know basically save my life so that's my reason and um, you know, in yoga, and I think you might be familiar with this, we refer to a term called ahimsa. Yes. Which is... Yeah, because I have the tattoo right here, so, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, you know, do we do we break that rule that, you know, we were taught for all the non-yogis, yamas and niyamas, these things, these rules that you live by. And, um, but the thing that it overlooks is our own, our yes. own health. Like, you know, when I was eating plants, I was hurting myself and I didn't know it. And I thought I was doing the best thing for the planet and the animals. But, um, you know, I, I now know different. But I also, you know, what about me? I have yeah. kids to raise and yeah. I'm important, too. And so I think that while it's a great idea, it's a little bit too myopic and we overlook our own needs. So um, I respect that in the yoga community, but I but I don't agree. I do my own thing because you know, we are all important. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And with the Ahimsa, it's like, obviously it's about non-violence and compassion to all living beings and things, to be honest. Um, but something that you just mentioned on that is like, it's basically a very unself-loving, non-Ahimsa thing to destroy our bodies with our diet. So it was actually more Ahimsa and more self-loving for you to actually listen to your body and start eating animal foods. So you can actually function to the best of your ability because it's not just you that will suffer if you're not functioning to the best ability. It's all of your loved ones around you as well and your children. 
It's just, yeah. Yeah, it's... yeah, and, you know, with regards to people that have a hard time accepting eating meat, um, you know, I also did a lot of research there, too. And just because you don't eat meat, it doesn't mean animals aren't harmed by your diet, which is a really hard one for people to accept. And I pissed off a lot of vegans yes, with that same. comment. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it's true. You know, I, I grew up on a farm and there are dead animals all the time and I didn't eat any of them. But they were a byproduct of growing soybeans, by the way, which yes. is what we grew on that farm and everything else. But, you know, it's to live something else dies. And that's just the way it is. Um, we want to breathe. We want to eat. We want to have water. Then something else isn't going to get that, whether it's an animal or human or what have you. So um, I took a long time for me to not feel guilty about it, but I don't anymore. I really think it's the best thing for the planet. And if you want to really care about animals, then give them a good life while they're on this planet and uh, buy, you know, uh, sustainably farmed animals and also protect the wildlife. You know, we destroy a lot of habitat for animals that we don't even eat. Um, so it's like needless dying, right? Yeah. So at least we're eating the animals that we kill on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really important things to be aware of because as as you know from your own experience vegans say it's the most environmentally friendly diet it's the most compassionate diet that doesn't harm animals but like you said you started to re realize from your own experience of being on a farm and i guess things you've researched into that so many animals in the agriculture well the, the harvesting of agriculture foods that are grown that so many animals get harmed i looked into it recently like 23 million animals on average in america get killed for pest control for the agriculture industry it's not a non-violent diet, but vegans don't want to hear that. So no. yeah, it's, it's really, really important. Yeah, they call it an accident. Yeah. <laughs> you don't do it on purpose, it's an accident. Uh, well, <laughs> it's a lot of lives, yeah, nonetheless. Yeah, sure. And like you said, if people really care, like trying to get like things like pasture-raised animals that are actual free range rather than just out of a cage crammed into a, in a yeah. small space still. Um, so yeah, you said, I think it's good to go back to this part. Um, you said that you've experimented with like grass fed and maybe pasture raised animal sources and you've tried conventional animal sources. And what is your experience between the two? Did you notice any massive difference or yeah? Not in my health, no. Yeah. Um, so I do have a little method though now is if I want steak, I'll buy conventional steaks because they're cost effective and easy to get. Yeah. Everything else I buy um, from a local farm. So, you know, roasts and ground beef and things like that, liver, I get all um, grass fed and finished. And so I do think it's better. There's not been a whole lot of proof, but, you know, we, we like to think that it has higher omega 3s because of the conjugated linoleic acid from grass fed and then being a healthier animal. And I think there's probably a lot of truth to that, whether it's, we haven't been able to prove it. So it's yeah. kind of a hypothesis. But, um, I have found that the taste of ground, the taste of grass-fed meats is good. However, it's very lean. So I feel like I do better with a little bit more fat. Yeah. Than, and so grass-fed um, animals tend to be a little bit lean. Um, that's my only complaint. Yeah. Yeah. Which Environmentally, is that's the way I want to go, and I wish I, could, you know, could support that all the time. But, and people ask about that because it's expensive. It can be expensive, but, um, you know, if you can't afford it, I'd rather people just eat meat, what they can afford yeah. and what they like, and rather than force yourself to eat, you know, grass fed stuff or even organs or whatever, that's just not, not for everybody. Um, but like right now, we're seeing a great example of why buying from farms individual farms is so important oh yeah because the food chain is threatened so we must support small farms and luckily most of those small farms practice regenerative farming lots of them do so i think we're doing a good thing for our ourselves our environment and um it really is important to support support those small farmers but for some people it's not feasible you know financially not feasible yeah, yeah, for sure. Because I've so, looked at the prices. In that case, you, have to do what you gotta do. 
Yeah, because yeah. I've looked at the prices yeah. of um, pasture raised and grass fed, grass finished mm. animals, just naturally fed animals on the diet that are designed for. Like it does cost a lot in America compared to conventional stuff. And like I said, it's better than so someone just try and do their best and that's still going to make you feel really, really good. Um, yeah. Yeah, rather than being like, oh no, I can't afford the, the highest quality stuff. So I'm just not going to eat that way and stick on a vegan diet, even though it's not working for me. Yeah, <laughs> not yeah. good. Yeah, so would you I think it's actually pretty affordable. Yeah. I see, I feel like I don't, aside from grass-fed meats, I mean, because of all the things that I don't buy anymore <clears throat> in food waste, you know, um, I and the food is so nutrient-dense that you don't need that much. So I think I spend a lot less money than I ever did. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, which seems seems to happen to a lot of people. I'd say, I'd, I'd say for me personally as well, I used to spend so much money when I was eating a vegan diet because it was never satiating me. So, yeah, yeah and it's, like you said, it's way more nutrition packed in a small package. Um, so, yeah, where would you say you're at with your diet now? Do you find that you feel best the majority of the time on high fat or high protein, like higher protein, or does it does it switch back and forth? So um, a typical day for me is going to be one high fat meal and one lower fat meal. Okay. Um, I don't know how I just fell into that habit and I kind of like it. I think it has to do with digestion. So I typically have a lower fat meal for my first one and my higher fat meal for my last one because I like to fast, um, intermittent fast. And okay. so, you know, I want to be able to fast. So I typically will eat my dinner at six or so, um, and then fast until noon the next day. Okay. So, so when I eat a higher fat meal, it definitely keeps me satiated longer. So okay. that would be like a ribeye and some egg yolks, for example, yeah. or um, high fat ground beef, and uh, maybe just that. Um, my lower fat meal, I would probably include a little bit of fish with it. I like to include fish in seafood, or iodine, um, you know, a variety of nutrients, so variety of foods. So usually something like that. I don't really eat a whole lot of chicken. Um, I would say predominantly fish, beef, sardines, eggs, occasionally bacon. Yeah. Um, I'll throw in a little liver now and then. Huh. Yeah. Now, have you found at any point, cause some people do, some people don't, but have you found that you don't get on with any animal foods that you've tried, so you don't eat them whatsoever, or do you, have you found that you get on with all of them that you've tried so far? Um, I don't, I can't say I've tried all of them. You know, some people are eating like yeah. yak and goat, and I haven't had every one of them. I, you know, I don't hunt. Um, but um, I try, I like to try a lot of variety. Um, one of our favorite things to do is have lobster and crab surf and turf. Oh, and, nice. you know, people come for dinner and we make that and they're like, wow, they love it. <laughs> but um, so that's probably about as interesting. Oh, my new favorite thing and I'm totally hooked on is cod liver. Oh, and okay. I get it in a can. Um, it's amazing. It's actually really, really good. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I'll eat that. With, and I eat a good amount. I mean, my first meal... Like today I had, um, flip-flopped it. Today I had a New York strip steak and um, two eggs, three eggs, yolks only, only because I don't like the whites. Ah, okay. and, and then I had um, a can of uh, cod liver. Um, and then my dinner, I had a big thing of salmon. Oh, wow, nice. Just because that was what I had. Yeah. Um, so, Yeah. I do like variety. I, I did the two steaks a day deal for a while. Um, it was okay. And then I felt like um, I was just eating too much. Okay. I was not feeling I was digesting. I was feeling kind of bloated. I was eating too much. And then during this COVID, I started to gain a couple pounds because I wasn't intermittent fasting anymore. And I was kind of uh... eating all day long. Um, and I was tracking my calories because I wanted to see you know where I was at. And I was actually taking in the same amount, but spread out throughout the day versus in two meals. And it did make a difference. Ah, okay. It's not really interesting. So, um, you know, a lot of people, women, I think, struggle with weight and they think carnivore is going to be the magic bullet. Usually it's not. It's, it's they're, they're still 
you do have to watch how much you eat. You can gain weight on carnivore. So that was where I felt. So I started to kind of mix it up with different foods and eating a little bit less. So instead of like a big ribeye, I'll eat a thin cut ribeye. So it's like uh, half. And that's plenty for me. And I feel good and I don't feel stuffed and uncomfortable. Yeah, and that's really good for you to make people wear that because a lot of people think, well, I can just eat as much as I want on the carnival diet as often as I want and I'm going to be fine. But it's, yeah, like you say, it's not a magic pill. Not a magic pill. I mean, I, I have a, a coaching group that I do every month and we usually focus on metabolic health. And one of the things is a lot of women, especially, I don't never see it in men, but women all the time, where they're like, oh, I've been eating 1,200 calories forever and I'm not losing any weight. And in fact, I'm gaining. Well, that happens all the time because, yeah, you're eating more. When you, when you starve yourself long enough on a plant-based diet, you mess your body up. And then you try to switch over to carnivore, thinking you're going to lose what you couldn't lose, but you don't because now you're in a caloric surplus. Yeah. So it's a it's an adjustment period, but yeah, a lot of people can eat too much, and I found myself going there too. And I, you know, I gained like two, three pounds, but I more felt it. I felt heavy. Uh, okay. And so I just realized I didn't need to eat this much food, and um, so I cut back, and I feel great. Yeah. I originally was eating a pound and a half, and I think I got to two pounds of meat a day. Remember, I'm like 117 pounds. It was too much. <laughs> so, so you just gotta listen to your body. Yeah. So how much? Yes, yeah, so you see around that amount. How much on average would you say, like, estimately, you eat now compared to like a pound and a half to two pounds? Um, a pound beef max. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then, and that yeah. was and that was really good what you said, like. It may be fine for males to do that, but it's not for females. And a lot of females predominantly end up listening to male carnivore teachers out there. So, yeah, it's, yeah. that's true. Yeah, I don't see a lot of um, female carnivores that have been doing it a long time that really talk about, you know, in regards to weight loss. Because for some reason, weight loss has become taboo. But it's still... 80% of our population is overweight. So I don't know why it's taboo because a lot of people still really struggle with it. And it, just because you're carnivore doesn't mean you don't. <laughs> um, and, and overweight is a contributor to every chronic disease. So I don't know why it's not about accepting yourself. It's about, do we have weight on our body that's going to cause disease? That's the issue. Yeah. And if you do, then you need to address it. And it doesn't mean you're obsessed with your body. If you do, I've had people comment that on my, on my stuff. I'm like, just because I want to stay lean doesn't mean I'm obsessed with my body my body weight. Yes. I know the connection between body weight, obesity, and disease. That's what I do for a living. So it is important and women still struggle with it. Um, I don't see a lot of men having that issue. Most of the men that I've seen that switch from carnivore to, to carnivore from another diet, they lean out and it works great and the women get all pissed because <laughs> they don't they don't have the same results. <laughs> yeah, for sure, without a doubt. And yeah, have you ever experimented with it all anything like raw butter, raw milk, or any like, or, or even other fats like beef tallow, pork fat, duck lard, or any of these other types of things? Yeah, um, I do have uh, duck fat and tallow in my pantry. Um, I did. I did for a while. I was eating bone marrow. I don't. I don't have any, so I haven't had it in a long time. I I would do sometimes a fat fast where I would eat, just eat high fat for a day or two and uh, really high fat, like bone marrow a couple times a day, um, even a little bit of butter. I now see butter as a processed food, so okay. I don't really eat it much, yeah. but I used to. And then I went through a period of I craved fat, like butter, and I ate tons of it. And I kind of wanted to let myself and just see what happened. I thought, am I going to balloon up or what's going to go on here? And nothing happened. I mm -hmm. literally ate a brick of butter a day, like wow. 200 grams of butter. Nothing happened. So I was like, okay. And then um, shortly after that, I switched over to more, you know, normal. I just got sick of it. And my body was just like done. And now I hardly ever add butter to anything. So I feel better that way. I feel like I, I'm a little, I tend to be a little more of a body composition that I want without any added fats. Um, but I have experimented with all of them. And then on the raw dairy, um, I did try raw cream. And when I used to drink coffee, I tried that. And I, I just, dairy just makes me feel kind of bloated. Okay. So I, I just don't 
really mess with it. Although sometimes I will have um, ice cream. That's my big treat. Um, and it's Revel brand ice cream is the only one I buy. Okay. And it's got obviously a lot of dairy in it. But um, it's the only one that I can seem to tolerate and not feel bad from. So other than that, I don't bother with dairy. It just doesn't yeah. seem to agree with me a whole lot. And it doesn't make any difference whether it's raw or not. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a good point to make for yeah, you and your experience. For me, it didn't. Yeah, I tried, yeah. but it didn't make a difference. Yeah, some people seem to get on with some people don't, but yeah, it's like as with everything you've experimented with, it seems that you've just been able to become way more in tune with your body and be aware of like what food's affecting you and being able to just yeah. let go of it, unlike on a vegan diet necessarily. Yeah, on the vegan diet, I think we just punish ourselves. <laughs> we just keep going with it because we think it's the way it's supposed to be. And we just deal with the distended bellies and gas and heartburn and all that stuff um, until, you know, finally it gets through. But I, I'm kidding, kind of. But yeah. I know there's a lot of vegans out there that are, they just can't get out of that cycle because they feel so strongly about it. And I kidding me with those people because i was there too yeah so kind of teasing myself yeah for sure that i doubt and i can relate as well and would you say throughout this whole process of like getting rid of like the vegan programming and brainwashing and starting to shift more towards animal foods did you have to go through quite um an emotional process around the whole switching back to animal foods like what was that like for you because some people find it very hard it's like you said, some people could feel guilty and feel very bad. Yeah. Like, what was that like for you as a whole? I probably spent three or four months toggling back and forth. God, you know, like kind of beating myself up a, a bit. Why can't I make this work on plant-based? Why can't I be healthy on vegan? I did that. But um, for me, whenever I'm in questioning of something, I research. I'm kind of a researcher from, you know, being in school for so long and that's what I do. So if I need answers or clarity on something, I look for it. And I had to dig really hard to find the truths about plant-based diets because it's very skewed out there. Like, you know, we, we you can't go out and just search PubMed for great articles on this stuff. It's just not there. So you have to look differently. You have to speak to people. You have to see different perspectives. And I did all that and it took a lot of effort. And then once I found it, I shared it. So I teach others what I've learned and that helps to kind of bring it home for me and um you know it's like you do the research and then you either agree with it or disagree and then act accordingly yeah. so that's what I did yeah and I finally did enough research that I was like okay this makes sense and we're all smart enough to make our own decisions and that's what I did so I did struggle for a little while but once I did my homework on it, I was kind of over it. Yes, yeah, so you I could wasn't upset with it anymore. So yeah, I think it's just a learning process. Yeah, so you could end up making like a very conscious, informed choice. So it's like yeah. you did all the research, and you start to see things in different ways. So you start to take those vegan goggles off, and start to see things in a different light and different perspective that you hadn't before, and also for you as well, just as for many people, it's like alongside that. You also learn about the environmental things and what you've been taught about vegans wasn't necessarily true with the whole vegan diet being the best for the environment. And then you just listened to your body. You tried it, it worked. So it's like you ran with it. It's like, it's working, I'm feeling yeah. better. I, I've been wanting to feel like this for so long. And it's, you just start to <laughs> be able to function to the best of your ability so you can live life and have the best human experience possible and do everything that you want to do. So it's like, yeah, I guess for you as work gave you a new lease of life. Yeah, sure did. It was the best thing I ever did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, before we end the interview, do you think there's anything else that you haven't shared with anyone today that would be good for people to hear or any sort of message you would like to leave with people that are possibly on a vegan diet and it's not working for them? Yeah. Um, yes. And I think that we like to say that there is one magic bullet. There's one answer to everything. And, and it probably sounds like I'm saying that about the carnivore diet, but it wasn't the only thing. I think that it's important for people to understand that it's a piece of the puzzle, but also in there is stress. We have a profound effect on our body from the stress that we're under every single day. Yeah. And, um, 
I think that is highly overlooked, but it is a big piece. So if people switch to carnivore diet to heal something usually gut related and they're not getting the results that they're looking for, then I say look to your stress, look to your emotional well-being because that has a, a very strong effect on your physiology and how your body acts with regards to hormones, with your gut, with your digestion, with sleep, with everything. 90% of our diseases are linked to stress. Yeah. So it's not, it's, it's, while I believe it is awesome for most people do really well on it, I don't think it's 100% cure all and it's not the only thing that we should look at. So, you know, I always talk about the things that will affect your health overall is your diet, which obviously this is a big piece right here, um, your stress levels and also getting outside and exercising outside for sunshine and, and fresh air. Um, and all of these things are compromised and threatened right now yeah. for many, many people. And so my message has been continue to eat healthy, but don't neglect these other areas because they are equally important to your health. Yeah, I think that's a very important message to drive home because so, pe so many people can just become so focused upon the diet and think that's the yeah. end, end, end all. Um, but then they can find, well, it's not necessarily giving me the results that other people have got. But like you said, it's about holistic healing. Yeah. Like you've got to get Definitely. everything in place to meet all of your human needs, your nutritional needs, your emotional needs and everything else as well. It's very, yeah, I think yeah. that's very important. 100%. And a lot of people just don't do that anymore. It's not part of our lifestyle. We tend to put our own health as just like, who's going to take care of it? You're going to rely on your doctors or the medical system? No, no, that's not going to work. Yeah. So we have to all take a personal responsibility. And that means getting your butt up out of bed in the morning to exercise. If you're busy, yeah. you have to do it. You know, it's just taking a personal responsibility for managing the stress that you deal with every day, whether it's meditating or running or whatever it is you do. For me, I go jump in the water and I, you know, that's my deal. And, yeah, no. but everybody has a way that they can make themselves better. So we're all in charge of our own health. It's just how you decide to do it and handle it is up to you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you have the power <laughs> literally, whether you're aware of that or not, you have the choice. Yeah. And one last, yeah, one thing I'd like to quickly just focus upon is like to add on to that is, like she said from her own personal experience, for the first month, she was like bumbling around and making mistakes with it because there's a lot of people that can try it for around a month and they say, oh, it didn't work for me. It, it, it just didn't help me. And a lot of people can hear people like myself. I got instant amazing benefits straight away, but some people don't. Don't expect to get the benefits as quickly as some other people and be aware that maybe yeah. you're doing it wrong because I've seen a lot of people do it wrong and then they say it's not working. And, but at least for you, you're very diligent and just kept like being like, okay, right, I'm just yeah. learning. This is a whole new way of eating. I'm not used to it. I need to work it out. Yeah. 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 I think that most people are going to need to, you know, find a mentor, someone that's successful doing it, not just like someone off the internet, but someone that you can resonate with that yeah. maybe is similar to you, has a body type like you, has a health condition like you, something, um, you know, and don't just copy people's meals. You got to find out for yourself what works for you. So journaling is really important, but most people I think need a good 90 days to really see where they're at because that first month, oh, your body is going through serious transition with your microbiome. You know, people have diarrhea for weeks sometimes. Yes. I didn't have that because I was already keto. So I was pretty, my gut was getting pretty well used to that. So I had very little issues with that. But some people really struggle with that and fatigue and the keto flus and all that stuff, um, which are easy to overcome. And uh, I think that if you limit yourself to 30 days, you're kind of doing yourself a disservice yeah. because you're just getting the tip of the iceberg. So I say give it more like 90 days and keep it simple. Like don't go all crazy to begin with. Just keep it really basic so that you can see what's working and what's not. Yeah, for sure. Essentially, it's an elimination <laughs> diet. So when yeah. you start throwing too many things in there, it's like, wow, is it that raw beef tongue that I ate that didn't set with me good? Or, you know, like, okay, we can just be simple. If you want to try out and do the experimenting, great. But maybe wait till later so that 
you have a little more clear line of sight as to what's happening in yeah. your body. Yeah, I'd say it's very important to, to stress that to people, like making sure it's an elimination diet as much as you can when you've got a lot of health issues going on. It's like yeah. the same with like the standard American diet. People don't know what foods affect them because there's so many ingredients <laughs> in there. And, That's right. And yeah, like you, like you said, when you don't make it as complicated as possible, it's like when I first learned about it, I think it's good for people to be aware of this. I was like, I need to have as many different animal foods as possible because I need as much varied nutrition as possible. I need organs, I need this, I need that and that. And then I found after a short while, actually most of the time I just need beef. That's just the main thing that I need most of the time and just refined yes. it and it made it easier for, for me and it has for you and many other people where if certain food's not affecting you in a good way, you can really pinpoint exactly what it is. Yeah. Yep, definitely. Simple as good. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, thank, thanks for joining us. And what I'm gonna do is put links down below for her social media platforms, because she is on YouTube. She's making some really good videos. And she's also on Instagram. And if there's any other social media links that she wants me to put down below, I'll put them down below for you. And like she said, she's a health coach. So if you do want help from her, you could get help from her directly as well. So yeah, thank you yeah. for joining us All today. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. And yeah, everyone, enjoy the rest of your day. Don't forget to leave a comments, question down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.